God, can you hear me? Pray and let us pray, everywhere and every day. God is great. God is good. My knees I seek your perfect will and peace. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Prayer is where we go to when things get bad. I think this is the summation of how most of the world thinks. You know, every time you watch one of those apocalyptic movies when the world is about to end or an asteroid or comet's about to hit the earth, what do they call the people do? They say, let's all pray. The world's ending. We're going to all die. Pray, ask God for help. Uh, because if you need some kind of miracle, that's when you call the big guy upstairs. Otherwise, God, stay out of my way. I got it all handled. Now, this is not what God calls for, nor are we to be selfish and only call out to God before things get bad. This was uh, the character of Epaphras, and he was a real prayer warrior. Now, Paul had many guys and gals that helped him to fulfill his ministry, people that the Lord led to get the gospel around the world, uh, just like Epaphras. And Epaphras was that prayer warrior, and it reminds me of a, a story that I was reading about Hudson Taylor, uh, the great missionary to China. And they were on the way there on the sea, and the wind suddenly just stopped. And uh, they were near some islands that had some cannibals, and uh, the boat was drifting in that direction. And so Hudson Taylor and his other friends, his other companions, they said, let's just go pray and ask God for the wind. And they went down, they prayed, and they came back up, and they told the captain, Captain, let down your sails. And the captain said, you know, what's the use? There's no wind. It's not coming. And Hudson told them that they had all just prayed and that the wind was coming, and it did. Wow. Uh, you know, to be a guy like that who could ask God to bring a wind is a prayer warrior. Epaphras was a guy just like that. And Colossians 4.12 talks about him. Uh, Bible reads, uh, Epaphras, a member of your own fellowship and a servant of Christ Jesus, sends you his greetings. He always prays earnestly for you, asking God to make you strong and perfect, fully confident that you are following the whole will of God. I can assure you that he prays hard for you and also for the believers in Laodicea and Heropolis. Not much is known about Epaphras. Some debate whether or not he is the same guy that's found in the book of Philippians called Epaphroditus. Uh, he is also mentioned in the book of Philemon, uh, chapter 1, verse 23, where it says, Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, sends you his greetings. So other than the greeting found in Colossians chapter 1, uh, we find no other mention of him in the scriptures. But even though he is only mentioned briefly, I believe it is not an accident that we find him in the scriptures. His testimony is a gem that we, uh, that we find in this passage. So what are some of the characteristics of a prayer warrior that we can learn from this passage? First of all, we can see a prayer warrior has to be earnest. Here in this passage, we find that Epaphras was genuinely concerned with the ministry. Again, Paul says of him, he always prays earnestly for you. Epaphras, he cared about the loss. He cared about the churches. And he wanted them to be strong and mature in the Lord, doing God's perfect will uh, for their lives. But the type of prayer Epaphras prayed uh, were earnest prayers. And the idea of this is to be striving uh, for a prize or fighting or struggling with God, much like Jacob did with the Lord all night, uh, to give everything you got to prayer. Uh, it reminds me of when I was in secondary school. Uh, uh, during the off-season, uh, we would have practices, and this guy 
uh, before practice, wanted to wrestle me in. And he was, he was pretty strong, bigger than me. And, and we would wrestle every day. And, uh, you know, he would encourage me, you know, keep going, keep going. Don't give up. Don't give up. And, you know, I eventually became stronger and stronger. Uh, and that's the idea of our prayer life is that it should be something, it should be something that grits stronger and stronger as we uh, grow closer to God. Because, you know, prayer is our weapon because we are in a spiritual uh, battle. And Ephesians six twelve talks about this. It says, For we are not fighting against flesh and blood enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against evil spirits in the heavenly places. You see, you might want to beat up the devil and the demons uh, for all the problems that they bring in our lives, but guess what? Uh, you can, and you know it. We are fighting spiritual battles every day, so we need to go to war with spiritual weapons. And besides God's word for direction, prayer is what gives us the power to fulfill God's purposes. Uh, Epaphras understood this truth. He desired for God to do some great things in the lives of the believers of the early church. And so he prayed. And when we go to war, we got to hit our knees. And this was the testimony of Epaphras. And that's the second thing today we're going to look at is the testimony. Colossians 4.13 says this, I can assure you that he prays. Paul had seen it with his own eyes. He knew Epaphras was a man committed to prayer. What is the testimony of your prayer life? I want you to think about that for a moment. Uh, I remember growing up uh, in church and seeing those guys in their suits and ties and looking spiritual and holy stand up and say all the these and thous, but eventually uh, I realized they were using many of the same spiritual cliches. There was no real substance to the prayers. Now, I'm not saying these were bad guys, but we need to be seen as people of prayer and not just so that we can get uh, a pat on the back. Here are some hard questions. Uh, do your children call you a prayer warrior? Uh, do your coworkers and classmates? Now, I'm not saying that you should uh, just get up tomorrow and lead everybody on staff in a corporate prayer. Um, something that I was thinking about uh, in dealing with this subject uh, of, of the testimony of your prayer life uh, was when we were first traveling out, raising support, and uh, we were going around to different churches. And after service one day, uh, my family and I, we were at a restaurant, and the waiter comes. Uh, he brings our food to us, and after he drops off the food, Abby looks over at him, and at the time she was only about four years of age, and she says, pray. And the guy looks stunned. He's like, what? And she says, you need to pray. So the guy immediately knelt his head down and started praying. Now, the reason why that's funny is because Abby knew by our testimony that we need to pray. And she saw that in our lives that we were people that uh, put God first. And so she assumed that everybody needed to do the same thing. Uh, Colossians 4.2 says this, uh, continue steadfastly in prayer. Our prayer life needs to be something that's continuous. We know that as believers, we are to be in a constant state of prayer, always asking God's direction. Pray without ceasing, the scriptures tell us. Now, I'm not saying that I'm the best prayer warrior, but I'm glad that my kids know that I am someone that prays and that I hit my knees consistently before God. And that brings me to my third and th final thought is that we need to be fervent in our prayers. Paul says of Epaphras that he prays hard. Uh, this is a fervent prayer, and the idea of being fervent here has to do with the frequency of our prayers before God. How often do we approach God's throne? Unfortunately, because we are selfish creatures consumed by our own wants and desires, most of the time we pray selfish prayers. Uh, now, tragedies do come our way, and there's no problem with uh, hitting your knees when these trials come into our lives, but we can remain self-centered if we're not careful. Constant prayer is important, but we need to be thinking about others. And this was uh, what made uh, Epaphras' prayer so good and, and, and such a great example to us. And it reminds me uh, of a good friend of mine uh, who used to be a missionary. And I love talking to him because anytime I have a problem or any time uh, there's something that's heavy on my heart, I can call him up. And before we ever get off the phone or even if we're in person, the first thing he says, he says, well, let me pray for you. And to me, when he starts praying, I can feel God's presence. I know that God's listening. Uh, sometimes we say, oh, I'm going to pray for you, uh, but then we forget it. If you say, I'm going to pray for you, stop, pray right then. Now, I'll be honest, I have prayed for some people, 
uh, and they never change. But I have prayed for others, and they have. I have seen those that were lost for a long time finally come to Christ, people I never thought that would trust in the Lord. I have seen those that have wandered away come back into the fold again. Uh, I believe prayer stirs the very heart of God. Yes, it's their choice. These people have their own free will. They have to choose to do the will of God. But I believe prayer causes uh, things to happen in their lives to draw them to the Lord and, and His purpose. Now, this is how Epaphras prayed, and we can do the same. And the last thought I have today is uh, of a friend of mine. He was my roommate in Bible college, uh, and he was from Cameroon, and his father was a Muslim. And every day we would pray for his dad. Uh, that he would finally come to Christ. And um, several years passed, even after I graduated, and I saw him at a meeting one day, and he came over to me and he said, Jim, guess what? My dad finally accepted Christ. You see, prayer works. If you're faithful and praying, God will answer it. And we need to be that kind of person. Um, you know, maybe today you never trusted in Christ, and until you ask God to save you, you, you cannot approach the throne of God because you don't have that relationship with Him. See, the Bible tells us that those that are believers, we can go boldly before the very throne of God. But today, you know, if you are lost, you don't know Christ, your first prayer that God can hear today will be a prayer of repentance saying, God, I need you in my life. I want you to be my Lord and Savior. And if you've never done that, if you never placed your faith and trust in Him, I pray that today will be that day of salvation for you. But you know what? As a believer, we need to be hidden in our knees more. Uh, our world has gone crazy. We see corona. We see uh, earthquakes and wars. We see uh, all kinds of uh, civil unrest in our world today. And we need to be asking God to do uh, something awesome. We need to see revival in our churches. We need to see uh, God reaching down and touching the hearts of the lost and drawing people to himself. And this is the things. these are the things that we need to be praying for. And I pray that even today uh, that God will convict your heart and, and you will spend more time uh, praying and talking to him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, thank you for who you are. Thank you for everything that you do. I pray right now, God, that you would just uh, speak to our hearts. Help us, Lord, to know uh, your perfect will. Help us, Lord, to know which path we should be taking. And God, help us to be people of prayer, uh, people that seek your face, God, people that seek uh, the desires of your heart and call out to you, not just when uh, things are going wrong in our lives, God, but just that constant state uh, of walking with you, that constant state of uh, talking and communicating and, and asking your direction for our lives. Lord, you're a good God. And we know, Lord, that there's pr probably people right now listening that have never trusted in you. And Lord, I pray that today would be their day of salvation, that they would finally understand that you died for them on the cross, that you loved the world so much that Jesus came in the flesh, God in the flesh, and paid that price for our sins, something that we deserve to pay, you paid for us. And they will accept that today and accept that gift that you so willingly gave. Accept that sacrifice and come into the family of God. I pray all this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. God bless you guys. Talk to you later.